Hello everyone, welcome to the Novation Hub live session. So our today's session is all about world of electronics. So in this session, we're going to learn what is a basic of electronics, what is actually electronics, basic electronics components, how they work, and we'll see in the end of this session, there's an online simulator, we'll simulate to the real time components so please be interactive or if you have any doubts in between the session write it down into the comment section so let's start our today's topic world of electronics so before starting the session i'll just give you the brief about this session so this in this session we're going to see First thing is an introduction to basic of electronics. What is the basic of electronics? Why we use this electronics or what actually revolution does by the electronics? The next one is a basic components of electronics. Then the behavior of electronics components. So there's a different types of electronics component we use in our daily life, in our projects, in everywhere. So we'll see what is actually that components and how they work. The last that we'll see the working of electronics components using Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is basically an online simulator where we can simulate the real life components. So let's start. First, the introduction to basic of electronics. So, what is actually a basic of electronics? What you think? What is actually a electronics, or why we use the electronics, or what actually electronic help us? So, electronics is just think about the basic circuitry, circuit that we used in our home, a circuit we used to make for our projects. So, basically. All circuits needs to have three basic elements. What is actually this three basic elements? So these elements are voltage source called current voltage. We can call as power source. So we'll see what is actually a, a what is a current or what is a voltage uh, in the first session. And the second one is a conductive path and a load so what is actually a conductive part path so there's a two types of material available one is a conductive there's a conductor we can call it as a conductor and the second one is a insulator so what is actually a conductor conductor are those material that allows the current to flow for example the aluminium metal that allows the current okay the next one is a insulator so what is insulator insulator that doesn't allow to flow to the current that's uh, for example rubber wood so you can just use some of the metal it's very careful connect with the uh, motor and all you can check whether it's working or not so this is called as a conductive path or you can uh, call it as a wire you can use a wire in between inside a wire there's a metal strip that's a wire and outside is a rubber so rubber wire we can use very carefully okay so rubber is for that's an insulator part so you can use it then inside of the wire as a conductive material that's a metal or like carbon as and something type okay then comes to the a load okay so what is actually a load so the voltage source such as battery as i told you earlier so voltage source you can call as current or the power supply is a battery or is a direct power supply this all depends on you is needed in order to cause the current to flow the circuit okay what is current we will discuss but 
what is actually so the voltage source such as battery is needed in order to cause the current to flow in that path okay so in addition there needs to be conductive path that provides a route for the electricity to flow what is actually a route you can see in your home there is a button there's a switch it's an on off switch that's connected with the wire okay so wire comes from the the main circuit or the main board so the, the main board the power supply is going on from the main board to to your switch so when whenever you can switch on the button power supply is going on it will turn on the light or the fan uh, so all that okay so this is a basic electronics so electronics is all about the circuits all about the components that we used to run the circuit or making any project so this is all about the uh, electronics so uh, in that electronics the main terms but which we can discuss in this session the main topic or you can uh, call it as a main terms so first term is a current see this is a basic i'll explain you every terminology or every term one by one but this is a basic so first the main important term or the main important topic is current so what is a current current is a flow of electrons then comes to the voltage what is a voltage so electric force that causes electrons to flow or you can call this is a pushing force that pushes the current to flow from one point to another point then comes to the resistor so resistor is a electronic component it resists the flow of current capacitor capacitor is also a type of electronic component capacitor uh, capacitor only stores charge on electrons so we'll discuss one by one this topics or this terms current voltage resistor and capacitor so before discussing this topic i will show you a brief video about the electronics what is actually electronics how or what is the type of electronics where we use electronics and the advantages of knowledge so you can watch this video we will continue this session after the video the word electronics is derived from electron mechanics which means to study the behavior of an electron under different conditions of applied electric field the device which controls the flow of electrons is called electronic device. These devices are the main building blocks of electronic circuits. The motion of electrons through a conductor gives us electric current. This electric current can be produced with the help of batteries and generators. Electronics have various branches include digital electronics, analog electronics, Microelectronics, nanoelectronics, optoelectronics, integrated circuit, and semiconductor device. So, in the field of electronics, there are different types of field, or there are different types of devices in the electronics. Some of the devices are called digital electronics. You can uh, see the digital watches and all. Then comes to the analog devices then comes to the microelectronics so these things are going to be advanced day by day now because of the technology change so technology changes everything now first we use digital then comes to the analog then comes to the microelectronics we use the microchips you can call this micro transistor micro ic's you can see the everything are going to be smaller First of all, we use the supercomputer now. We are using the MacBook, okay, or we are using a tab, okay. So how is this possible? Be possible because of the microelectronics or the nanoelectronics. Then comes to the optoelectronics, integrated circuits, ICs. Integrated circuitries are very smaller than semiconductors, okay. So this is all the field of the electronics that changes every day. Let's look into the history of electronics. 
Diode vacuum tube was the first electronic component invented by J. A. Fleming. Later, Lee Defrost developed the triode, a three-element vacuum tube capable of voltage amplification. In 1947, Bell Laboratories developed the first transistor based on the research of Shockley, Bardeen, and Bratang. In 1959, Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments developed the first integrated circuit. Advantages of Electronics so this is some of the history of electronics, where the electronics comes from, or the scientist that works first for, uh, for developing the things about the electronics and all. Then it comes for the advantages of electronics. Electronic devices are playing a major role in everyday life. The various electronic devices we use in everyday life include computers, mobile phones, ATM, pen drive, television, digital camera, etc. So this is all about the history, the what is actually electronics and the history comes from which scientists are, did the good job for about the electronics and all the, and the last with the advantages. So we use a lot of devices about electronics but we want to learn how they work so the important thing is how they work or what actually components we use for making a pan drive or for for making a robot or for making a television or camera see we only know the function of that devices but we don't know about how they work or what components are inside so we're trying to learn i mean i will try to show you how that the, the things works okay so let's start further sessions so before starting learning about the every topics of the electronics called current voltage and all the good word of this three job is electronics was something i could always fall back when i needed food on the table so that's right that's electronic so first of all we'll see what is actually a current so you can see in the screen there's an electronic circuits showing the direction of electron motion but what is the electron motion so current is it is a flow of electrons in a circuit okay a circuit made of conductive path so current is measured in amperes so in electronics when you use the terms called current voltage resistor capacitor so there's a particular measuring term is there for the particular terms uh, topics or the terms for current we use or you can call it as a unit we can call it as a unit of the current or the unit of the voltage so current is a measure is a flow of electrons in a circuit but how we measure or how we can see the current measurement. So we use the unit called as amps. You can see in the battery or you can see everywhere in the electronics components too. It's written as the five amps or the two amps. Amps means ampere. So ampere is the unit of current. Electrically symbol is I. So it is not possible to like draw a circuit in a 3D way. So when you're going to make any devices or any circuit, we have to make an electrical circuit. So when we we'll use the electrical word, we use the terminology I for the current. Okay. So you can see in this circuit. In your screen, it's showing the direction of electron motion. In this circuit, you can see the plus and the minus symbol is for battery. Or here is a switch. So when switch is open, electron is not flowing through the circuit. Okay. Battery is power is supplying, but switch is open. Okay. When you turn on the switch, for example, 
with this circuit your light bulb is connected but switch is turned off or you can call that switch is open so there is no electricity flow in that circuit but when you turn on the circuit or when you turn on this switch rapidly the electrons are flowing on that circuit or you can call it as electricity or the current is flowing on that circuit and your bulb will glow so that is a motion or that the circuit or that the flow that the circuit is made of the conductive path okay you can get the copper you can use as a copper word the copper wire and all okay so this is what actually is current is okay current is a flow of electrons the unit of current is ampere and the electrically symbol is i now comes to the voltage what is basically is voltage is so voltage it is a pushing force you can call it it's a pushing force that causes electron to flow from one point to the another point okay you can see in the image okay the force v is pushing the electrons this is this tube this is not a tube this is a wire okay you can see this is a wire in this wire i want to flow of current so how current will flow by the help of voltage voltage pushes the electrons from one point to another point then only current will start the flow you can see this is a mr voltage mr voltage mr voltage trying to push the current okay for trying to push the current is what the flow of electrons so mr voltage trying to push the electrons from one point to the another point of the wire then then only current will start the flow you can see it's clearly showing us mr voltage is pushing this is a wire the so wire this is the electrons and this is a current flow so current uh, voltage is is a pushing force that pushes the electrons you can also call it as potential difference in and technically we use the potential difference for the voltage also then comes to the voltage is measured in volt okay as you know the current we, we we measure current in amperes amps we measured current in volts v so you can just check the battery and all you will get v 2 volt 5 volt 9 volt battery 3 volt battery okay 12 volt battery so that is for the measurement of voltage volt okay electrically symbol is v as same as the current electrical symbol is i for the voltage the symbol is v okay so this is all about the current and the voltage so there are two two basic types of electric components available first is a passive component and second one is a active component so what is actually a passive or active so do one thing take a simple blank page or a paper make a table okay draw a table write it down on one side is a passive and the second side is a active now i'll tell you what is actually a passive and you can write it down what is actually which passive component you know or which active component you know okay so first active so the active components are those components those required power to operate okay so the, those component that requires power to operate we can call as active component so you can write it down the components in for example fan so write it down in the uh, active side fan then you can just go through and watch in your home also okay you can see the tube light tube light is also an active component because it needs a power then fan ac washing machine television earphone is everything is a active component so you can just go around write it down which uh, which active components about you know the next one is a passive so passive is the opposite of the active component the passive components are 
those components who doesn't require power to operate it. Okay, write it down. Please write it down the one passive component frame. If you know, you can write it down in the comment section too. Okay, we'll discuss about the passive and the active component. So I'll tell you the sum of the passive components. One is a resistor. Second one is a conductor. The third one is a transistor. So this is a passive component. We use this passive component inside the circuitry part. We'll know more about this passive components. So first one is a resistor. So what is actually a resistor? So resistor, it opposes the flow of current. What resistor does? It opposes the flow of current. For example, a LED wants a 2.5 volt. The maximum power capacity is 2.5 volt. But you have a 9 volt battery. If you are connecting directly that LED to the battery, battery damages the LED because of the excess power what you can do in that condition. So what you can do? You can do, you can use a resistor. So what resistor does? A resistor will do. Resistor do, it oppose the flow of current. If LED wants 2.45 volt, you can just place a resistor in between the LED and the battery. Battery gives the 9 volt, but the resistor transfers the 2.5 or the two or the three. So the, your LED will glow and it will not damage the LED. So it is a use of resistor. As I told you, resistor is a passive component. So how we can see, like how we can calculate the value of that resistor, which resistor we have to use for the that power, like for two point, if I need a 2.5 volt supply, which resistor I have to use? If I want, uh, 3 volt or 5 volt which resistor we have to use. So that amount of opposition to the flow of current is called the resistance of the resistor. Okay. So we we denote it see as same as the current and the voltage I and the V, we denote it a resistor as R. Okay. And same as the both, the resistor have also a unit called as ohms. The unit of resistance is Ohm and the capacity of the flow that opposes a flow of current is called as resistance. So now we'll call as resistance so which uh, which uh, resistance we have to use for that particular purpose or the for particular application. So that the LED resistor and the battery that real time simulation will see in that further session in this session. So before that, as I'll explain you that resistor things that works in the Ohm's law. Those who are those who are in you all, those who don't know about the Ohm's law, you can see in the uh, image what is actually a uh, Ohm's law, or what actually the resistor do, or what actually the resistor does the use of the resistor. So, what is actually a Ohm's law? Ohm's law thing that uh, with all the physical conditions remaining unchanged, physical conditions. Okay, so when the physical conditions is remains unchanged or the same, the current through a conductor between two points, you can see in the image that the green thing is a wire, that the conductive wire. Okay, you can see the every helmet of the every cartoon, you can see it's written as V, A or Ohm symbol. So Ohm symbol is a resistor, V is a voltage and A is an ampere, that's a current. So what actually voltage is doing? Voltage is pushing the current. But, but in between the wire, I place a resistor. That's the ohms one. So what actually resistor is doing? Resistor is opposing the flow of current. Okay. Current is trying to flow, but not full current. It will oppose some of the current. So if you're applying the 9 volt, it will resist the 5 volt. It will supply the 3 volt. Okay to the output side. What are Ohm's law? So if the physical conditions remain unchanged, okay, the current through a conductor between two points for the wire, for example, wire, the current flowing in that wire is directly proportional to the voltage drop 
the two points across that two points and the proportionality constant is defined as resistance so this is actually a ohm's law this is about the resistors and all you can see in the image so uh, if you are using if you will use when when will you use that resistor or i i think some of you know all about the resistors all so you know colors or we'll see the resistance ca uh, capacity of the resistor by using that color coding so this is a color coding there's a sum of the color will use the resistor that black brown red orange that the different band there's a different Bands are there in the resistor, the first band, and the second, the third, and the multiplier tolerance and all. So we, uh, we like see the value of the resistance by using that the color coding. You'll see if you know more about the resistance and all, we have a platform called as novation.ai. The link is in description. If you want to learn more about the resistance, uh, resistance or the resistor, how to calculate the value of resistance you can just go and register yourself in the innovation.ai link is in description just check it out the next one is a capacitor so what is actually a capacitor so capacitor is almost like battery okay capacitor and the battery both stores the electrical energy but in the different ways Capacitor doesn't produce electrons by chemical reactions such as battery. That's why battery stores charge for the long time. Or the battery stores the power for the long time because he produces the uh, electrons by using the chemical reaction inside the battery. But capacitor only stores charge or electrons, or you can call it as it stores the electrical type of power. Okay. Then Capa same as the uh, resistor, the capacity of capacitor ability to store charge is known as capacitance. The unit of capacitance is farad. So the unit of current is ampere. The unit of voltage is volt R V. The unit of resistance is ohms. Then the unit of capacitor is farad. Or you can call it as conduction two as a capacitor. Okay, so you can see in the image what actually it is doing. You have a the bulb. You have a power supply, but we placed a capacitor in between the battery and the bulb. So when will you increases the Capacitance value you can see if the capacitance value is low, so it will. You can see the power is increasing. Okay, when you increase the capacitance value, okay, the power will also the, your bulb is also growing much more. Okay, so when you have um, less capacitance, you have stored the uh, less number of charge. But if you have a uh, more number of capacitance value you, you can like uh, store the much charge or your bulb will glow more so you can see clearly in that video showing in your screen okay there's another name of capacitor is called as condenser have you ever heard about the word condenser it generally we use in home it used in the fan sometime the fan running very slow so some our father or mother called as a conduct as like condenser is not working or it's like it's damaged so the same term is used for the capacitor is condenser you can call it as capacitor or the condenser so this is all about the basic things or the basic components the basic terminologies called current voltage or basic components called resistor capacitor and how they work this is all about. So I think you have that paper. You have that active components and the passive component. So you can just go through your home. Just write it down. You will know more what is actually a, a, a passive or the active components. Now, if you want to learn more about the electronics or the electronic circuit, how we use the electronic circuit, what how uh, like we have to calculate the value of resistance, capacitance, and all. The parallel circuit and the series circuit. So you have a 
platform you can just if you want a link is in description the platform is called as www.novation.ai okay link is in description you can just go through that link you can just click on that register yourself i will show you the platform at the end of that session okay now what is actually a problem okay till here i explain you about the components you have a imagination how that that register is working or how that that uh, capacitance is work capacitor capacitor is working but if you want to see the real time simulation of the resistors or the led or the battery so this is your problem like how to examine the electronics components practically so for that we have a solution for you it's called as tinker cat so tinker cat circuits is the easiest way to get you students are like for you started with learning electronics so let's start it's time for the tinkercad simulation we'll see how to use the electronics components real time or how it's work the working principle and so on okay so first of all open the browser first of all you have to open the browser write in down www.tinkercad T I N K A R Tinkercad dot com. And just enter it. So this is a Tinkercad platform. I already registered in this platform. If you want to use this platform, first of all, you have to register it. Okay. So if you want to know how to register. into the tinkercad platform link is in description the process and the step for registering into the tinkercad platform go to the description click on that link and know how to register and how to use tinkercad okay after the signing or after the register into the tinkercad you have this screen okay you have to go to the you can see there's a option called circuits you can click on the circuits click on the create new circuit see i have already made some of the circuit but i will explain you how to make a new circuit so whenever you want to make a new circuit you have to click on that create new circuit so after clicking on the create new circuit you have a new window where you have a space for making a circuit or simulating the real time problem here you can see this is a space for you have to make a circuit and you can see how that electronic components works you can see there's a some electronic components are there in the right side of the screen the resistor led push button potentiometer if you want use more electronic components you have to change this option component basis to the all now you can see you have a lot of components are here that the input component there is a sensor then the output components everything motor there are different types of motor and you can see the power source also you have a 9 volt battery you have a 1.5 volt battery coin cell battery the solar and everything is here okay i will explain you one by one how to use that thing first of all you have to take a led second first that and go you can just drag select and drop it here in the workplace so this is a led this is a red led so a single led means light emitting diode in this led you have a two leads you can see in the screen one is a long second one is short lead so long lead is a positive or you can call it as anode positive one is a anode and the negative one you can call this cathode is a physics term but if you want to in the normal terms the long lead is a positive that the anode one and the short one is a negative okay now this is a led if i will connect this led to directly to the 9 volt battery 
directly to a 9 volt battery if you want to rotate it you can just use the rotation tool here in the left side you can see it's written as rotate R. you can just rotate it now i'm going to connect this battery directly to the led we'll see what will happen okay so you can connect see in the battery that red one is a positive and the black one is a negative so connect positive side of the battery to the positive side of the LED, then same as for the negative side. Now, you can see in the right side top corner, you can see the option called a start simulation. So, what will happen when starting the simulation? Is it LED is glow or anything else? So you can just write it down in the comment section what will happen next when we start the simulation the battery will glow or not now i'm going to start simulation you can see see what will happen battery is uh, led is tennist is bursting why you can see we are using a 9 volt battery with the capacity of the LED is 915 ampere we are applying. We are current through the LED is now is 9, uh, 915 milliampere while the absolute maximum is 20 milliampere. The maximum one of the LED is 20 but we are supplying the 959 volt power. That's why. So for that purpose what we'll do? Which opposes, which component opposes the flow of current? Yes. You can just write it down in the comment section which component will use for opposing the current so yes we'll use the resistor you can see this is a resistor you can see so you can just click on the resistor you have a description of the resistor name one and the resistance value what is actually a resistance as i told you earlier resistance is the capacity of a resistor to opposes the flow it's called a resistance you can change it to uh, i'm just using it to 60 ohms you can change the value to the kilohms to the ohms i'm using that to, to 60 ohms now you have to connect this resistor to the positive side of the led now connect the second side of the terminal one to the Batteries positive side. Next, connect LED the negative side to the negative of the pad. Now, start the simulation and see what will happen. Battery uh, LED will glow or not. See, now it's glowing, but again showing some error. What is error? Still, we are supplying the more power. If you want to change it, you can just click on the resistor. You can change the resistance value. As I told you, still resistor is resisting some less current. That's why we are supplying the more to the LED. Okay. Now you can change the value of the resistance. You can see what will happen if I increase the value. You can see if I use the hundred or the thousand ohms. I am using a thousand ohms. Okay, now what will happen? You can see, so it's not showing that, or it's not showing the any end. Okay, so it's glowing. So you can change the value of resistance, you can see how it works. Or instead of the uh, LED, you can connect the motor to for working how uh, the motor will affect when you connect the resistor. Now, if you want to use a switch, see, currently what will ha uh, what is happening? When you start the simulation, it will automatically turn on the LED. But if you want to use the switch in between the LED and the battery, I'm using the slide switch. You can just select the slide switch, rotate it. Yes. You can see in the slide switch we have the three leads or the three connections. First one is a terminal one, 
the second one is a common connection and the third one is a terminal two so just connect common to the led with the resistor you can just connect it to the led directly common side then use a resistor connect the one side of the resistor to the terminal 2 terminal 2 of the slide switch now connect this the second terminal to the positive and here now you have to connect this thing to the negative of the LED to the negative of the pad. Now we'll see how it works. It we'll starts simulation. See, still uh, LED is not going when you click the uh, slide switch on and you uh, slide the switch, it will automatically turn on. When you turn on the switch, it will turn off the LED too and you turn on the switch it will turn on the so this is how you will you will do this online simulation or you, you will check how to use the electronics components real time before using the physically so this is all about the tinkercad how to simulate what is actually a basic component of the electronics now if you want to learn more about the electronics on for anything any course you have a platform you can call as innovation.ai link is in description go register yourself and learn more about the electronics i will i will show you how to register you, you can just open a new window write it down www.novation n o b a t i o n dot a i see you have uh, this platform this is a home page of the innovation.ai you can see in the top side you have a different types of options course dashboard my account shop register so first of all you have to click on the register and register yourself for using all the courses free the course is our free you can see the featured courses you have robotics app development electronics ai everything is there first of all go and register yourself so there's a two links are in description if you want to know the step-by-step -step process how to register in the tinkercad the link is in description and first of all go to the Novation.ai register yourself for learning more courses or more about the electronics. You can see we have a e learning.